Who's, 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 who's? If one goes attack each other, then you go with that, right? The more religious. First of all, religion dictates. Second of all, let's say they're equal. Who do I go with? Here's where the ulama say that because, because the women, what she goes through, she is given the edge. Bearing in mind that everything is perfect on both sides. Whose decision? The mother takes the edge. Why? Because they say you have to see what's called Al-Ghunum Bil-Ghurum. Al-Ghunum Bil-Ghurum. Yani, who has more to lose? The, the mother or the father? Sure, who has more to lose? They say we have to weigh it. Who's got more to lose? Who do you owe tribute to more? Your mom or dad? Like, she carried you. Right? Did he carry you? Oh, he carries you when you're two years old. But well, you start crying, he lets you go. She carried you. She delivered you. Right? He didn't deliver you. He barely showed up to the hospital. She took care of you. Al-Hidani took care of you. That's why ulama'na right now, they say that a, a, a boy or a girl should be taken care of by the mother if la samahallah there's a divorce till seven years old some ulama say mamnu'a till they get married they stay with their mother theory why the mother is more important like we said she carried you she delivered you what else she put when you were at work who's taking care of the kid right you are taking care of your child. So when, 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 that, when that mother carried you nine months in her stomach, what happened to that woman? That woman underwent so many mental situations, it, it drove her nuts in a way, that the birth, the carrying, the delivering, the, it affected her mentally, physically. While it affected her physically, what were you doing? You were caught with the significant other. Now who has the right to take care of the child? You or her? Not taking anything away from the, from the men. The men know, they know themselves. I am telling you Islam. If you get mad, don't get mad at the deliverer of the message. You get mad at Islam. Right? So this is what Islam says. If we need to sway it, you have to go to the mother. And that's why, because of the, the, the love that the mother gives to this child, right? You would find the brothers from the same mother are more connected than the brothers from the same father. Okay? Imam al-Khumayni, rahmatullah alayhi, he says, Al-mar'atu kal-Qur'an. A woman is like a, the holy book. It is for these two that it was left. It was left up to these two to build the male, to build the human, the Quran, and the woman. The human, the way he's supposed to be. When this child, ulama say, when this child is more connected to his mother, why? Because at early stages of his life, he learns everything from his mother. Because they had a problem. They said when, the, when, the, when a child grows up, is he a person or is he singular? Meaning, is he given something? Meaning at birth, Allah, was he born with something? Or does he have his own personality or no? He has nothing. Allah says that we are, uh, You don't know anything. So, you don't know anything what? When it comes down to knowledge. But it doesn't mean you don't have something within you. Gharizi within you. We say it's a mixture of both. You don't have the knowledge. But you know to rush to your mother when you need to eat. That's why it's very crucial for the mother to take care of her child at early stages of his life. It's very Her, her existence in the child's life is much more important than the existence of the male's life. The male might ask, then if she's the soul and she's the, the, the soul carrier of everything, what's my job? 
you always wonder what is your job. Your job is to help this institute called motherhood, to help her and see what your role is, to help her and try to bring out this, this young child, male or female. And this is the only way you're going to have a perfect children. Other than that, it is, it's a lose-lose situation. So here they say, they say, in yasrak faqad saraqa akhun lahu min qabl. Now Yusuf looks at these people and he says, what are they accusing me of? They are accusing me that I stole. What did you steal? Ulama'na bi'ulu, there's five things could be possible. Ulu, Yusuf saraq, so he stole an egg when he was young. He wanted to feed uh, the poor, whatever, the hungry. Another one, no, he didn't steal the egg. He stole the whatever made the egg. He stole the, the chicken because he needed to feed the poor. Okay, the third one says, no, he stole a mantaqa, a belt for his grandfather. How do you feel? I don't understand. I don't understand. Sufist. I don't understand. They call it the Sufist. He has a great idea. He says, as if Yusuf, they are accusing him of stealing al-mawadda min qalb Ya'qub, the love from their father. He stole the love from their father. And that's why they're accusing him. They're directly saying, Yusuf, our father was not just. He treated you better than he treated me. And my father screwed up. He did not pay attention to that. He favored you over me. When he favored you over me, it created some sort of a hatred from me towards you. And Yaqub is one to understand how dangerous that could be. Thus, the Holy Prophet used to say, Allah fi awladikum. Watch out for your children. Make sure you're, you're just within your children. Be very careful how you do this. A lady, a man's married to more than one lady. He comes and he, because she's the most beautiful out of his women, he comes and tells her, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write this piece of land in your son's name. And even his son, but Ibn Hay. She was a very smart woman. She says, لا حتى يشهد رسول الله Until you get, until the Holy Prophet notarizes it. Okay. He went to the Holy Prophet. He says, Ya Rasulullah, I have a piece of land. I want to give it to my, to my son from this wife. And my wife wouldn't allow me. She says, until my husband, until the Holy Prophet notarizes it. What do you think? He says, do you have any other children? He says, yes. He said, did you give him the same thing? He says, no. The Prophet says, Allahumma la ashhadu ala jawr. I will not witness injustice. He says, why is this injustice? The Holy Prophet is trying to tell him, what are you trying to do? Because one of your wives is better looking than the other, or her father is wealthier than the other, or you favor, you favor her, you favor her own son, you're going to destroy the brotherhood between your sons. And I will not allow it. The Prophet gives a, a lesson over here. Alhamdulillah, we don't have these problems nowadays to deal with. Inshallah, we never, we never do. The Holy Prophet looks and says, Man kana indahu lahu. If you have a child, not only do, are you supposed to be just amongst your children, you have to play the role of a child with that child. The Prophet did not give that as a theory. He also exercised it in his daily life. The way he treated Fatima Zahra salam, The way he was with Al-Hasan wal Hussein So he says, this is the fourth interpretation of the verse. The fifth interpretation, his aunt, Ya'qub's sister, she was the caretaker because Rahil died. Rahil, the mother of Yusuf, died at early age. Yusuf was young, him and Benjamin. And that's why Ya'qub probably favored these two over their, the rest of the brothers. Why? Because they're orphans and they're young. And of course you're going to favor the young over the elders because the, the elders are khalas, they're past their prime. You've got to take care of the young right now. In addition to that, they're young. So 
Yusuf Aleyhisselam 